Hey everybody, I'm Roxanne Speed. Welcome back to my channel. I just want to give you guys a little bit of wisdom and revelation that I think would encourage you right now, especially for you that are in a waiting season. You know, you don't know why you were on the plane, you passed the gates, you know, you were going where you were supposed to go, you knew the destination, maybe you didn't know all the stops or how many connecting flights or what it would look like when you got there, but you had your bags packed and you were excited, you know, you were ready for the peanuts and the little drink they give you on the plane and you heard the pilot start talking and the plane backed up and it started to go forward, right? And all of a sudden, it didn't come to a screeching stop. The plane kept taxiing, but all of a sudden, it did stop. You know, I think a lot of us in the body of Christ are there right now. And I was asking the Lord recently, really recently, God, why, why does it seem like we picked up momentum and then we stopped? Well, God's saying you didn't stop. He says you're in a Joseph waiting season. I said, what does that mean, Lord? And this is what God revealed to me. He said, Roxanne, remember the story of Joseph, the real story of the man that I put through 17 years of waiting? Joseph was a 17 year old boy, a teenage boy, when he received two dreams. The first dream was that he would, you know, he would be a leader and that people would bow down to him. And he got a second dream to confirm because God does that. He confirms that to us. And then Joseph opened his mouth and he told his brothers who were already jealous of him because Joseph was favored by his father, favored by God. And guess what? They sold him into slavery, guys. Total culture shock. Talk about total change of life, total halting to all of his dreams. He was dying to the flesh, right? Because God knew that one day, 17 years later, that Joseph would be second in command in Egypt. He would answer only to Pharaoh. Guys, that's like being the vice president of the United States. That's like being the vice president of a Fortune 500 company. Pharaoh himself probably didn't even give Joseph too many things he had to go to him about. Why? Because Joseph was excellent. Why are we in a waiting period? Joseph had waited 17 years. First, he was sold into slavery. He got to Potiphar's house where he was a slave. But he worked hard and he kept going and he had movement. And he kept working at his gift. And guess what? Eventually Potiphar put him in charge of all of his household belongings, all of his, his slaves. He, he owned it. He basically rocked it as a slave in Potiphar's house. And Potiphar had a wife who had the hots for Joseph. The Bible says that Joseph was very good looking. So guess what? Joseph's going along and he's being righteous and he's loving God and he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, like many of us. Okay, this is not a sign to stop or that you're sinning or that you've missed it or you, you, you aren't gonna get there. No, this is a sign to hang on. Why? Because just like Joseph, Potiphar's wife wanted to sleep with him. He said, no, I won't defy God like that. No, I won't quit. Yes, I'm gonna go forward with the ministry. Yes, I'm gonna start that business. Yes, I'm gonna quit that job. Or I'm gonna leave that toxic, nasty relationship. You know what happened? His wife lied on him. Potiphar's wife lied on Joseph and said that he raped her. He didn't rape her. Ouch. It's gonna be a pretty big blow after your brother sold you into slavery at 17. You finally get settled somewhere, and then out of nowhere, boom, you get hit again. Well, guess what? So Joseph then has to travel along. Potiphar didn't want to sell him. Potiphar didn't want to turn him in back to, you know, people and authorities, but he did. He gave him up because he had to honor his wife. But God allowed Potiphar to do this. Why? Because Joseph wasn't done being trained. He was there, he was anointed, God had called him from birth. He had given him the dream, the vision. It was the same thing. He knew where he was going. He didn't have all the details. All of a sudden, Joseph ends up in prison in Egypt. And he's there for years. And it says that he became fortified like iron. He got strong. He got thick skin, guys. He got tough. He didn't get mean. He didn't get bitter. He didn't get angry. I'm sure he went through all of that, just like us. We are humans. We have flesh. God knows this but were equipped with his spirit, just like Joseph was to overcome everything. And you know what Joseph did? He became excellent in prison as well. Excellence means you're very best, guys. You have to do everything you do as if it's unto the Lord. And God says in Proverbs, he says a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before important people, leaders, kings, presidents, anyone that you are gonna impact with the gift God's given you. God's gonna do the same thing for you. It's gonna open doors. It's gonna bring you in front of the people you need to be brought in front of. It doesn't say that you're gonna go find them or God's gonna have you beat down doors. No, that gift, the 
that you have is going to make room for you, just like with Joseph. So Joseph's brought to prison. I don't know how long he served. I can't remember. But then the baker and the butler comes in, right? Or no, it was the baker and the cupbearer. And they're complaining and they're groaning. And Joseph's like, oh my gosh, but he's running things because he had favor even in prison, guys. Even in your delay right now, God has given you a lot of favor. He's looking upon you. He's saying, okay, run my guys. Run my girls. I got this. I've given you the vision. I'll keep going. You might be at a, a roadblock right now or a crossroads, but I'm going to tell you which way to go. But don't get bitter. Don't let disappointment take you under. You know, so Joseph kept going and I'm sure he processed his emotions and he's like, okay guys, you have dreams? The cupbearer and the baker had dreams. Well, one of the dreams that Joseph interpreted using his gift while in prison, while falsely accused, after being sold out by his brothers, while being betrayed as a young boy, years later, he's still working for God. He's still putting his best efforts out there. He's still using his gifts, guys to serve the Lord. And I'm sure he did it angrily at times. I'm sure he didn't like people. I'm sure he had been betrayed. But guess what? So was our Lord Jesus Christ. Guys, that is the test. That is the price we pay to walk in an anointing so great that we see the, the dead raised. We see the blind eyes open. We see the captives set free, guys. We see people launching into their ministries. We see demons come out of people. We see lost give their lives to Christ and start ministries so great that they bring in thousands and millions of souls, right? But what did Joseph do? So he did what he could with what was in his hand. He interpreted the dream. He allowed the Lord to give him wisdom and revelation. And I'm sure through this whole time, the Lord was teaching him the things of the Spirit. Just like he's teaching many of you watching right now. A lot of you guys, you walk in the prophetic anointing. You're prophets. You know, you, you are on your way to apostolic office. Or you're walking in the apostolic anointing. You're going to raise the dead. You're going to heal the sick. You're going to drive out demons, guys. You're going to bring many in for the kingdom of God. But again, so Joseph interpreted two dreams. The cupbearer's dream was that, you know, he would, whatever, he'd be out in three days and then he would go and he'd be restored back to his position. He did something wrong. I think it was the baker. The baker was going to serve three days in jail and he would get out, but he would be beheaded. How do you think Joseph felt when he had to interpret that dream? When he had to tell one guy, yeah, you're going to be restored, but no, you're not. I can't even imagine. I don't even think the Bible goes into a lot of detail about how that happened, but it did and he did it. And then he says, guys. Guys, 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 I have a gift, you know, I can do all these things. Remember me, remember me. Tell everyone about me. They said, okay, yeah, we won't forget you. Thank you so much. I'm sure it was the, the cup bear, not the baker. And excuse me if I have those two twisted. But anyways, it's pretty similar. So two years go by. Two years pass. And Joseph, I'm sure that everything in him, he was like, what is going on, God? Why am I here again? Why am I in delay? Why has everything that I've done come to not nothing? It didn't. God was setting him up for the right time that when Pharaoh, the man in charge, the leader, the great man, the king that was going to give Joseph the open door, the keys to the kingdom, so to say, so that Joseph could save the lives of many, had to have a dream, had to have a problem where Joseph was the solution to that problem. Well, two years later, Pharaoh has a dream. His sorcerers can't figure it out. His, you know, whoever, whatever, the psychics, no one can interpret this dream. And the cupbearer goes, oh my gosh, I remember Joseph. He has a gift. He's able to interpret your dream. So they go and they get Joseph and Joseph does. I'm sure he was shaking in his boots. He, in one day, guys, went from prison to the palace, literally. He went from the pit, being no one and nothing but a slave, eating slop doing the best he could with where he's at. Although it didn't look like there was momentum, although it didn't look like he was gonna take off, he knew he was in the plane, the plane had taxied, his seatbelt was on, and he was ready for that pilot to give him the go, right? For the steward to sit on and say, okay guys, you know, no getting up or whatever, wherever we're going. Anyways, you get what I mean. But he waited, he waited patiently, and he knew that God was not a man that he shall lie, and that if God said it, that it settled it. But he knew, he knew one day he had to be ready. 
So guys, I'm telling you prophetically by the Spirit of God right now that there are many of you watching that God is going to raise up and elevate you into a public place of influence and affluence and leadership. And you have to be ready. He says, prepare now in the time that it's slow, but keep momentum. Keep moving. If you have a YouTube channel, keep recording videos. If you do a podcast, keep on talking. Whatever you do, if you start a little mom and pop boutique, keep doing it. Keep buying the products. Keep advertising. Keep praying. Keep working with that child. Keep going to counseling with that, that husband. Keep pressing in, like Apostle Paul said. Make room for the vision. He says, I don't know when I'm getting out. I'm in prison. I'm locked up. And I don't know what my court date said or when I'm going to get released. He said, but I know that by the grace of God, I will come to you in faith. So prepare a room for me. Literally, go make my bed. Make it chill for me so when I get there, I can do what I'm supposed to do. He had faith like that. Well, so did Joseph. So Pharaoh has a dream. They go get Joseph. Joseph interprets, like I said. And then boom, they put Joseph in fine clothes. And he was the top of the food chain, guys. There was no one over Joseph. And then many years later, Joseph's families came back. His dad, who thought he was dead for years, and his brothers who sold him into slavery, who totally stabbed him in the back. And he had to get his heart right, you guys. He had to be positioned and fashioned in a place of humility because he was exalted so high, so fast, that he had to have been tested so intensely under so much fire of affliction because God was exalting him to a place that he knew if he gave it to him too soon or if he missed a step that it could take Joseph down. And God loves us too much, guys. He is not going to give any of us something too soon. You would not give your kid a car if they're 12, right? I don't care how bad you want to give it. I don't care if you just won the lottery and you want to give them a Porsche or you want to give them a, I don't know, a pony if they're three years old. No, because it's going to hurt them. Well, God is not going to take Joseph's out there that are going to raise up people, save nations, tell leaders and kings what to do, anoint leaders and kings. Guys, he's not going to do that with us until we're ready. So this is the word of the Lord. Get ready. Be like Joseph. Keep preparing. Make peace with the people of your past. Make amends. Be at peace with all people as much as it is on your end. You can't make everyone like you guys. You can't make everyone be okay with you. But get ready, he says. Go back and check your heart. Make sure there's no unforgiveness. Make sure that every root of bitterness is plucked up, guys, and start planting love. Because you know what humility is? It is power under control. It means that you can be the queen of England and you can strike everybody. You can just, you know, sentence them to death. You can do whatever you want, but you don't because you know the power you have, but you know who you are and you know the love of the Father. And many of you guys, Many of you that are walking this prophetic journey, many of you that are called into the fivefold, and you're going to lay hands on the sick, and you're going to see mighty exploits of God done through you and in you by the Spirit of God, because you've been tested. You can forgive much. Why? Because you have been forgiven much. Because God didn't call us because we were qualified. God didn't call us because we were um, something of, of, of purpose or, or notoriety in this world. No. A lot of us guys were the misfits. We're the black sheep. We're the one that God hold out before the foundations of the earth. He set us apart from our families. And he said, I'm going to use you because I'm going to trust you because you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. So get ready, people. Get ready. Any day now, they're going to come knocking at your prison door. They're going to come knocking and say, come here. You got a gift? Interpret this dream. You can run a company. You're an accountant. You can model. You can act. Oh, you can teach me how to raise my kids. You know, you can get me out of this financial crisis. You can, you can solve my marital problems. Let's do it. So keep doing everything today when you think nothing's happening, just as if any minute they're going to knock on that door. They're going to release you from prison. They're going to put you before a president, put you before a king, put you before pastors or preachers, whoever it is, and say, go, run with that gift because it's your gift that makes room for you. And as long as you keep using that gift, practicing that gift, learning and being diligent to study, to become excellent in that gift, the doors, God will make room for you. He's going to open them, guys. We don't have to knock them down. We don't have to push them down. Just move. Keep forward momentum. If you knock down, get back up. Right? Because a righteous man falls seven times, but he keeps getting back up. So, guys, 
I just want to thank you for being a part of this channel. Welcome all my new subscribers. Thank you guys, everyone, everyone who is so seated to this ministry. It has been answered to prayer, guys. It keeps me being able to hear the Lord, to stay in my word, to focus on God so that I can bring a word, that I can do the broadcast, that I can use my gifts to bless so many people. Thank you guys all for your praise reports and your, your testimonies of what God is doing in your life by allowing me to bless you because I've walked a hard road. You don't get this anointing easily. And I don't say that in, in, in any kind of boast because I know I'm nothing. Like like the Bible says, Apostle Paul said, Apostles, we're, we're the scum of the earth, right? But we love people. We keep on going. So guys, hit the like button if you enjoyed the content. Don't forget to subscribe. It's so important, guys. We need to reach the world. And share, share, share. You know, I always say it's better to give than to receive, right? Okay, guys. If you want to sow into this ministry, please do. It is good ground, guys. And the Lord is going to bless you back a thousandfold. If you can't sow financially, please pray or, you know, ask if there's anything you can do. I need help with, you know, technical stuff. I mean, websites are so much you guys can do that people like us that are building and planting for the kingdom of God need. So, guys, if you do want to help out, I'm going to put how you can give financially in the, um, description below also come check me out i do a live broadcast on hod radio word network every sundays at 4 p.m central standard time you're gonna love it ask anybody god shows up and he shows out and he is ready to speak to you too so again guys share this i love you take care see you next time